Did you miss me? Well, I'm back. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. My name's James, welcome to Divers Ready. It is so great to see all of your smiling faces. And finally, here we are, the Dream Dive Locker, my new studio space, editing suite, classroom, office, and just quiet place for me to reflect on my thoughts is finally 99.9% .9 complete. It's time to give you, my friendly, loyal subscribers, the grand tour. But first, I just want to explain my hiatus from the YouTube platform. Uh, and I want to say thank you to everybody who reached out via email or messenger. Hey, what happened to you, dude? We haven't seen a video in a while. Did the Rona get you? Were you abducted by aliens? No, none of the above. We moved house. We moved house. It's that simple. We had a hell of a lot of work to do on the house itself, as well as renovate the dive locker and get everything up and running and it took time so we knew there was going to be a break i didn't know it was going to be exactly four weeks but we're back now if you haven't been following the development of this project i strongly encourage you to go back and watch part one and part two so that you have the historical perspective of what we started with i'll put the links to both of those videos in the description of this video down below right let's start the tour outside so the workbench you can see behind me, uh, you saw briefly in its construction phase in part two of this series, uh, that thing will withstand a Cat 5 hurricane. It's concrete anchored into our driveway and permanently attached to these fence posts which go about four feet into the ground. This thing is absolutely solid. As I told you guys in part two, I have the habit of over-engineering anything I build. So this workbench is really no exception to that rule. But what I like to do is work out how the actual workflow of an area is gonna go and make actual products that are gonna be useful to the way that I work. So the idea here is that I can back my truck straight up to the sliding gate. The tanks have a storage immediately there, so you don't have to carry them further than necessary. And then I have my rinse tank set up, and then this workbench is designed so that it's slatted, so all my wet dive gear just kind of sits on there under this canopy, out of the harsh Florida sun, and gets to drip dry before I put it away in the dive locker. The rinse tank I chose is the Rubbermaid 100 gallon. It's pretty much standard issue for dive centers here in Florida. Pretty lightweight. It's actually meant to, you know, feed livestock. I've plumbed it in with PVC, so it has a cold water feed, and the drain runoff actually runs through the sliding gate fence to our hibiscus bushes. So whenever I empty the rinse tank, all that water goes to water the plants. So let's start over here with our slat wall system. Essentially what this is, is PVC strips mounted to the wall that you can then buy hooked baskets and hooks for and customize it however you want to arrange your gear. I went with PVC over melamine or metal because obviously the water resistant qualities in case I'm using that for anything damp. So I've got six of these large baskets. Uh, top one up here, that's my tech shorts. Then I have my surf uh, water parkers right there, my full face mask, public safety diving. And then down here, I have uh, my SMBs. You guys know how much I love my DSMB, so they get a basket of their own. Then I've got my other scuba accessories in here, my compass, some knives, some gloves, and my main computers. And then in this basket, I keep whichever booties I'm using for the season that we're in. Down below that, there's a row of hooks that my spear gun rests in my spare spear and my lobster tickle stick. I also have a hook there with my stringer set up. And below that at the very bottom, taking up the space down here, 
is a row of hooks for all of my current fins. That red shelving unit behind me I bought from Home Depot for like 100 bucks or something. It's from their Husky range because in this household, we believe that if it's Husky, it's probably pretty good. This video is not sponsored by Home Depot. I really wish it was. It would save me a ton of money. And the other reason that I chose this shelving unit is because all of the racks are made out of powder coated steel. So hopefully that's gonna offer a lot of protection for a long time to come. We will see. What I did was I set the top shelf up for box storage up on top. All the rest of my booties are up there and some snorkels and accessories and some more storage boxes and so on. And then I decided to use the underside of that shelf as hanging space. So for example, my open water dive slates are there. My lobster hotel is in the back there. I have all of my uh, lights, underwater lights in one row, all of my reels in another row, and all of my bolt snaps, spare bolt snaps are clipped on hanging back there. Getting a little low on inventory, need some more bolt snaps, never have too many. And then backing up on the next shelf down, uh, essentially that's the space where students would keep their gear. I have a couple of these gear bags from Kraken Aquatics. I'm gonna talk more about those in another video, big fan of them. And then we also have a uh, area where I keep all of my masks. All right, I'm lying, that's not all my masks, but it's a good selection of my masks. Next shelf below the masks are my backplate and harnesses that need a little bit more organization, my public safety diver wing, and then the next shelf down below that is my tech wings. So I have two uh, redundant bladder Apex 60 pound lift wings there. And then on the very, very bottom shelf is all of my wife's scuba gear. As you can see, the space is now air conditioned. I went with a much more powerful unit than was actually required for this space because over engineering. Below the AC unit is a piece of iron pipe, which I sprayed with a protectorate. And on that hangs my recreational BCDs. As you guys know, if you come and do a recreational course with me and you don't have your own BCD, I'm gonna put you in the Hydrolite from DiveRite. Massive fan of that BCD, made a review. I'll put the link up here. Over here are my wetsuits and my dry suits and my wife's wetsuit. So I have a three mil, a five mil and a dry suit. That's all I need. I don't go between a five and a dry suit. I don't use a seven or anything like that. If it's too cold for a five mil, I'm in my dry suit. My wife will never go diving if it's cold enough for a dry suit. So she just has a three mil and a five mil. This little red unit here we had before in the old dive locker. Uh, it's where I keep all my regulators. They just swing open like this. And now I've got the space for it because before in the closet it didn't really fit. And these doors would always catch on something. But now they just swing freely open and all my regs are nicely organized by what I use them for. This area isn't quite finished yet. I need to seal the sink around the walls and then I want to build some kind of a little draining board that will stick out over the dehumidifier just so I've got somewhere to put my coffee cups and all that kind of thing. And last but not least, a very important Ziggy's water bowl, which is the bottom of one of those tanks that was cut off to make the lamps. Moving then into the office side of the operation, I suppose I should give you a tour of my new desk and editing setup. Some things have changed from the old studio, some things you'll recognize. Uh, but first off, the monitor, the computer, all the basic equipment that I had set up has stayed the same, as has the rigging system of those two large poles on which I mount a variety of different arms for my main light, my microphone to clip my headphones to, and actually have a built-in tripod for my camera on my desk to re record like the intro to this video and my Mouthpiece Monday style videos. My monitors and my headphone haven't changed. I still use the Edifier speakers and the Marshall headphones, both which I fully enjoy. I'm still an Apple guy at heart. I still edit on my MacBook Pro in Adobe Premiere and I have the Apple standard issue keyboard. That hasn't changed. What has changed is the desk itself. I've moved to a standing desk. I've never had a desk job in my entire life. So when I started this YouTube channel and it was taking me a while when I was learning how to edit videos to uh, you know, sit at a desk for like five, six, seven, eight hours a day, and my posture was horrible. The old desk is gone, the chair is gone, standing desk, height adjustable. I looked at the price of some like brand name standing desks and it scared the bejesus out of me. So what I did was I went with an Ikea um, set of legs for a height adjustable desk and top that off with a really nice piece of butcher block in birch. 
A lot of birch wood used in this side of the office just because it's lighter and I've got dark blue and dark gray as a color scheme, so I wanted to keep the wood fairly light. Below the desk is my filing cabinet with my student files and my printers down there as well as a waste paper basket, of course. Next to that, I have a tool stack of drawers that basically has all camera equipment. It's all the batteries and chargers and filters and accessories and straps, microphones and lights and all this kind of stuff that you need to build a YouTube channel. Stuff that's got nothing to do with scuba diving. Really, really quite boring stuff. Moving on. As I said in part two of this video, this space also has to function as my classroom. Now, because I choose to teach only one or two students at a time, I didn't need a great deal of space, but I did need some kind of a presentation setup. So I went with a glass whiteboard. Actually, I messed up. I ordered this thing on Wayfair and uh, I didn't realize that it wasn't matte on the back. It was literally just a transparent piece of glass. And because I picked this kind of oceanographic wallpaper, it would be pretty much impossible to see anything I wrote on it. Problem solved by a tin of spray paint that's actually for making glass look frosted. Picked it up for a couple of bucks again at the hardware store and just frosted the back of it. So now it's kind of semi-transparent, but when I write on this board, it actually looks pretty clear. So whilst I may enjoy a standing desk, I realized that my students probably would appreciate somewhere comfortable to sit. However, space being a premium, it had to be something that I could pack away or fold away. So I came up with the idea of kind of like a breakfast bar. I bought a couple of really strong industrial hinges that can take 500 pound load each. So they're ultra strong, ultra stable, over-engineered, I know. Uh, and then I braced them on two pieces of two by four and a sheet of birch plywood, again, keeping it light with the wood and mounted that to the wall. In addition to that, I went to good old Ikea and bought a couple of folding bar stools. So comfortable, yes. Space saving, absolutely. Behind me up top there is box storage shelf. It's a mezzanine shelf. It goes the entire width of the room. Again, over-engineered. There's six inch concrete anchors that hold that thing to the actual wall itself. Uh, and you can put whatever you like up there. You can do chin-ups off of that bar. It ain't going anywhere. Um, but basically I have too much dive gear. It's a lovely problem to have, I know. Uh, so not all of it I use all the time and that's where I'm going to keep it. After the first video in this series where I asked for your suggestions for the dive locker, a lot of people were very concerned that I was not going to have sufficient alcohol supplies in the Dream Dive Locker. Hope you saw from the intro B-roll that I solved that with this tiny little bar here masquerading as a med kit. A couple of other features, obviously the neon logo sign, super happy about that. I put these LED strip lights up here just to give it a little contrasting color. I can change the color of these as and when I want. And of course the bookshelves, which I like, they've got a really nice modern brushed nickel look to them. Um, one is exclusively held for student manuals. The other one is for my learned reading myself. And of course, Yoda made the journey. It wouldn't be the dive locker without Yoda. And another thing I like about this shot as well is having natural light come in. I can actually set up a shot here, talk to the camera and have sunlight coming in, which really wasn't an option in the other studio because all the light would have been behind me and I would have been silhouetted. Can we talk about these concrete countertops for just a second? because they're possibly one of my favorite things about the Dream Dive Locker. I poured them myself in melamine molds. I used a specific type of concrete that's recommended for countertops, and I added a kind of a graphite charcoal dye to them. The reason I went with concrete is because I don't do a lot of sawing and hammering in here. If I'm fixing screw equipment, it's, you know, a screwdriver, maybe a soldering iron for some electronics, that kind of stuff. So I didn't need anything that was really impact resistful and I just really wanted to keep with that industrial aesthetic. I'm super happy with the way they came out. I've got three slabs on two different levels because I wanted to drop down where I'm sitting right now by the window. I love them. I think they look super cool and hopefully they're gonna last a very, very long time. And then under each of the countertops, I have more storage. Under this one, the longest one, I have a 56 inch Husky unit that's on casters. It's got five drawers and a cupboard and a, and a rubber wood worktop surface so I can do bird's eye shots, head down shots, all that good stuff. And all my scuba spares are in there. So that can be things from like spare batteries to hoses, gauges, everything nicely organized. Under the window countertop, I've got a box for all my power tools. And then under the last worktop behind me over there is the fridge, which of course is very well stocked with Guinness.
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me, the progression of the world's greatest dive locker. I don't know if it is the world's greatest dive locker, but it's certainly a creative space, a quiet space for me to teach classes, create videos for you guys, and just a quiet spot that I can sit and, uh, you know, reflect on my thoughts. And yes, while COVID has put the dampers on some of our content partnerships for obvious reasons, we have actually new content partners coming through and we're gonna be making so much more exciting content. I can't wait to see all the possibilities that we can use this space for. So again, my heartfelt thanks to you. The four weeks off did me a world of good creatively. I've got so many more ideas now, so much more content coming for you guys. Thanks for being patient with me. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name's James. This was your Divers Ready video for this week, and we are back, baby. Dive safe, dive often. All right, moment of truth. Huzzah! <laughs>